WBNE. Hello, and welcome to episode 43, all about the passing of the Grey Company, chapter 2, book 5 of The Return of the King, being the 43rd part of That's What I'm Talking About. Hi, my, how do I open this podcast? <laughs> Hello, my name is Mary Clay. If that's too complicated for you, just call me MC. And today I'm joined once again by Pixel, who's here for her Return of the King chapter. Hello. Welcome back. Thank you for coming on, as always. Thanks for having me. Um, It was perfect timing, because I texted you and was like, do you have a preference of a chapter you want to come on for, for Return of the King? And you were like, oh, just whenever. And I was like, great, so how about... Like, next week. (laughs) Great. So next week? Yeah. Sounds good. So this chapter is The Passing of the Great Company, Chapter 2, Book 5. And I was in a rage for reasons that we will get into. But first, I just want to ask you, how are you faring during all of this? I'm pretty good. I, uh, as far as things go, I'm pretty lucky. I work in IT, so my whole job was... Very easy to pack up and do from home. I can imagine, yeah. (laughs) I've really been busy. We have a lot of work to do because we support the other users uh, working from home, and that's been a big change for them. So Mm -hmm. we have a lot that we're doing to make that work. Yes. Uh, Listeners, thank your IT person today, (laughs) because I'm sure that like your current work at home situation, if you have it, is thanks to an IT person. My brother-in-law works in IT for the University of Virginia. And so when they moved all of their classes online, he was the one having to do that. So uh, I sympathize with anyone working in IT. And I thank you. So Yes, like I said, the passing of the Grey Company. We are back with the gang. I was so excited. Um, It has shifted perspective now to Gant, nope, to (laughs) Legolas Gimli, Mary, and Aragorn. I was like, I'm missing someone there. At the start of the chapter, I was like, oh, I see what's going to happen. Okay, I got it. So they, he's always going to follow the perspective of a hobbit because that's the easiest perspective to tell this story from because the hobbits rarely understand everything. So it's always nice to be able to like have to explain things to Mary as a way to explain things to the reader. So I was like, oh, I see how this book is going to go. We're going to follow Pippin for the Gandalf storyline. We're going to follow Mary for the Aragorn storyline. And then Frodo and Sam for the, the main storyline. I got it. And then halfway through, I was like, what? <laughs> They're like, no, actually. What? What's happening? What's happening here? They are all starting off on the their journey now after Gandalf and Pippin have already left. Right. And... As they are moving through the land, I guess, are they, they're going to, I don't know where they're going. (laughs) At first, I thought they were going to Minas Tirith. And I was like, that's confusing. Because why wouldn't you just go with Gandalf and Pippin? And then they change course and they go to Helm's Deep and meet back up with Theoden. I don't remember. There's a lot of back and forth Well, he is going to Minas, however it's pronounced, Tirith. But he says... He has to take a different route, and that's why they're traveling this way. Okay. Anyway, wherever they're going for the time being, they come a- they come across a group of writers, and they're like, ooh, are these bad guys or good guys? Bad guys, good guys. And turns out it's basically like Aragorn 2. It's another yes. Aragorn. <laughs> it's another ranger named Halbrad Dunedain, Ranger of the North. We seek one Aragorn, son of Arathorn, and we heard that he was in Rohan. And this is when this group tells us that they have been summoned. And Aragorn is like, I didn't summon you. But let's not talk about that. Let's move on. And I was like, um, I'm concerned here because how did he find out otherwise? I was like, let's let's focus on that for a bit. Oh, and then also what he does is they give him a staff that... Arwen, I believe, gave to them to give to Aragorn. Yes. Oh, she said, The days now are short. Either our hope cometh or all hope ends. Therefore, I send thee what I have made for thee. Farewell, Elfstone. So uh, she has made this very special gift for Aragorn because we can't forget that he has a lady waiting for him because we haven't seen her 
since Fellowship of the Ring, which was over right. 500 pages ago. I feel a little bit of it is having to bring her back up before he does land where they're going to sleep for the night. Mm -hmm. Just like, don't forget. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> that's how, that's always how I feel whenever, like in the previous, in Two Towers, whenever Frodo and Sam were using the vial of Galadriel, it was mm -hmm. like Tolkien's way of being like, remember Galadriel? <laughs> Hey, hey, remember? Yeah, remember? <laughs> also, just like a side note, if you're listening right now and you're like, hmm, is she going to talk this much about the female characters and make this much fun of Tolkien and his female characters the whole episode? Yes, I am. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like 100% I'm going to call Tolkien out for this. Um, so if that's not your thing, then it's not going to get any better from here. <laughs> I'm all in. But keep listening anyway. Um... Yeah, so he has a gift from the Lady of Rivendell. And I had to like do in my, I had to like orient myself because I was like, yeah. oh, that's Galadriel, right? And then I was like, wait, no, that's nope. Lorien. Rivendell is Arwen. And then I gave myself a pat on the back for remembering. Your one brain of, got there. For remembering one of the three female characters. <laughs> yeah. There's just so many to choose from. I know, right? And their names aren't similar at all. Yeah, Arwen, Eowyn. <laughs> God, Tolga. Anyway, so they make it to Hornburg, which was like the fortress inside Helm's Deep where they had this huge battle and oh that's right because Mary wasn't there with Legolas and Gimli and all of them when they had the the this huge battle and Gimli I missed them so much he says this there was a battle here three nights ago and here Legolas and I played a game that I won only by a single orc and I'm like oh I missed these fools oh how I it's been a while it's been a while it's been such a long while yeah <laughs> like not only did I have to sit through the second half of two towers with Frodo and Sam and Gollum but I also had to make it through a very long first chapter of Return of the King just to get back to these two buds. Yes. And I miss them so much. And Gimli is like, oh, and over there, there are these beautiful caves. Should we go look at them? And Legolas is like, hey, now. You're an all -star. We agreed that we would go on a field trip after all this was over. I'm not trying to have you like get out of your end of the deal. Right. It's like, we will go see them eventually. And I just love these. We'll get there. Yeah. I just yeah, their dynamic callbacks. is so great. Oh, it's so good. I hope it's, like, I hope it's as good in in the movies. I, I know you probably, like, can't say too much, but, like, I hope they didn't completely kill, like, that aspect of their personalities. No, I think you'll, I think you'll really enjoy, especially Gimli. Yes. Oh, so, yes. I, you'll definitely enjoy it. Obviously, though, everyone will say it. The movies are never as good. This is true. Yeah. Well, it's it's funny, though, because I feel like a lot of... Um, I feel like Lord of the Rings could very well be the exception to that rule for a lot of people who would be like, oh, yeah, the movies are better just because they're probably easier to consume. Yeah, they don't want to digest the the books. It's a lot to, to take in. Honestly, watching all of the movies is a lot. That's also true. <laughs> Are you going to watch the movies too and oh, do a whole podcast? Are you going to break it up or just per movie? I don't. They're long. I can't wait. You don't have I know. to. I don't. Say no, I yet. don't know yet how I'm going to do it because I don't think I could possibly cover like one movie in one episode of Tolkien about. Um, I mean, like, and and do it justice. Mm -hmm. So that says to me that like I would split each movie up into multiple episodes. So then I'm like, okay, so do I get a different guest for each of those episodes? Do I get one guest and we just sit on Skype for like 10 hours and get 10 episodes? <laughs> Do, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and like if I do get different guests, does that mean I tell each guest like, hey, watch, you know, from minute... I don't know, 62 to minute 73. But then what happens if like we talk for the first part of the movie 
way longer and we don't cover as much in that part and then in the next I don't know see there's like a lot of planning and logistics that I don't know what to do about so I'm glad you have to do that (laughs) because that is how would you so how would would you do it I want to hear your thoughts I definitely think you have to break it up it's just way too much to cover in one episode but I think you have to have multiple guests I just I think you have to but also, yeah, I how think are you going to do more that? Fun too to get lots of different yeah perspectives. You'll get a lot of different stuff. opinions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see. It's a long ways off. It's you got time. How many chapters are in this? Let's see. Wait, what? Oh, okay. That that scared me because when I turned to my table of contents, there is like book five, book six, and then there was a couple other things, and I was like, wait, are there multiple like books within this book? It was just the all the books. One, two, nine. So another, I don't know, like sixteen weeks. About. So I've yeah, six- still got a while. Yeah. So I probably and let's be let's be generous and say that I'm gonna be a really really ahead of it and I'm gonna plan for the movies. Um. So let's say fourteen weeks. I will. I, I have to figure to figure all this out. It'll be fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Totally fine. Nothing's on fire. So, like on on one side, obviously, I don't want us to still be, you know, quarantining and social distancing and everything. Fourteen weeks right. from now, however, it would be the perfect quarantining activity. Yes, just S- binge watch. So, like on the, the bright rings. side, on the bright side, at least I could have that to look forward to. Yes, if you're still there in that time, it should bring you a little bit of joy. Exactly. Oh, so then they start talking about, well, wait, if Aragorn didn't summon you, who did? And they're just like, oh, it was probably Galadriel. And that's how they solve it. And I'm like, okay, I don't understand like what facts or, you know, evidence you're having to support this claim. But I guess I'll believe you because it's Galadriel as opposed to like... It was just funny because I was like, oh, this is going to be some mystery. And we're going to find out that it was like Sauron or Saruman or, you know, someone evil. And these guys, these rangers that showed up actually aren't on their side. And it's going to be this mystery that. And then I was like, flip the page. Oh, Galadriel sent them. All right. That's all that there is to it. It's not at all. And the mystery's over. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I was like, well, that that was a short. I think I wrote that down. Oh, yeah. I put, okay, short lived panic. Galadriel sent the message. Yeah. Um, so then they go to sit down to dinner. And oh, well, actually, first, I should say Legolas turns his elf eyes because uh, all of the other people are like, hmm, it would have been nice if like there could be some elves here or maybe some other dwarves. Gimli and Legolas are like, man, it's too bad these men had to come. And Legolas turns his elf eyes towards. Uh, I guess Lorien, I don't think it says exactly, but he turns it towards the direction of his people. And he says, there's no need to ride to war. War already marches on their own lands. So we know that off in Elfland, they're fighting their battles already. And and it's there, which I guess is also good, like a good explanation for why the elves don't show up to help. Yeah. Um, so then they sit down to eat and Theoden wants to hear because this is like the first time that they've had to like sit down and have a break. Mm-hmm. Um, and Theoden wants to hear about his journeys and all this stuff. And Mary does the exact same thing that Pippin does in the other chapter without like even knowing that the other did it. Mary offers up his yeah. sword to Theoden and pledges his loyalty and service to him and to his army. And I'm like, I wow. love this part. Yeah. It's, well, it's like a mirrored thing, but mm-hmm. for opposite reasons. Like, they do the same thing, but Pippin's doing it out of, like, a sacrifice and a way to, like, yeah. help out. And it's very noble. Both of them are very noble. But Mary's is like, this guy was super nice to me. I'm going to help him now. Like, here you yeah, go. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. He's like, I, I, like pretty opposite cool. reasons. <laughs> yeah, he's I'm like, gonna... you're real cool. Here's my service. <laughs> Exactly. And Pippin's like, so, um, your son died saving me. Please don't kill me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Here, here's my service. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like those those parallels that show that Mary and Pippin are 
going through a lot of changes and transformations and, and growth since they've left the Shire, which we later learn when they run off that, I think it's Halla, I'm never going to remember his name, Hallagrad, Halladadad, Halbarad, that's it. Halbarad says later when they're going off, He's like, he, what Mary doesn't know is that we are working really hard to keep the Shire safe and that not even the Shire is um, untouched by all of this and that the Shire is also in danger, um, which is like a sad update to hear, but <laughs> not what you wanted. Exactly. So when they, oh, also when they got to Hornburg, Aragorn goes off. He suddenly decides to go off and brood by himself for a couple hours. Very Aragorn. This is what I call his emo transformation. Where Love it. Because of what happens later, especially. He mm-hmm. goes off and sits by himself. And when he comes back to join everyone, he looks very changed. He... Looks like he is very wary and tired and there's a lot of things troubling him. And then uh, it says, but Mary had eyes only for Aragorn, which side note, they use this line later that Eowyn has only eyes for Aragorn. And I just think it's funny that it's like Mary only had eyes for Aragorn. And it's like... The connotation is definitely (laughs) different. Uh, It makes you think, obviously, that's not what he's going for, at least how I interpret it. But it definitely gives you that. Yeah, I mean, Merry and Pippin have, like, always had crushes on Aragorn anyway, so. (laughs) Yeah, a little bit. (laughs) So, anyway. um, Merry had eyes only for Aragorn. So startling was the change that he saw in him, as if one night many years had fallen on his head. Grim was his face, gray-hued and weary. And he says, I am troubled in mind, Lord. I've heard strange words and I see new perils far off. And this is when I was like, Aragorn, what you doing, dude? What, <laughs> you what okay? what's, hap- what's happening? What's happening? And he starts asking about like, how many days do you think it'll be until like, until we've reached here or until this battle will happen or, or whatever? And Aragorn says, oh, okay, I see. For me, the time of stealth has passed. I will ride east by the swiftest way, and I will take the paths of the dead. And I was like, Aragorn, this isn't the plan, buddy. Let's all stay in a group and go off to battle together. And I was like, Aragorn's going to leave, and that's going to suck. And then he says that, oh, I'll go with Legolas and Gimli if they want to come with me. And I was like, no, 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 no. Do not take them. Do not take them from me. I just got them back. And then he says that they're going to leave Mary behind. And I was like, what's okay, what's happening? And it feels, uh, especially given like what happens further in the chapter, it feels like this is a different Aragorn. And he, yeah, I was like, this, this isn't part of the plan, bro. What, what are you doing here? You can see his quick transition into like a, a gloom and doom kind of thing and he feels really pressed for time and for um i don't know just like structure to happen he's asking all sorts of questions i don't know that there's a reason he says he leaves mary behind i know mary is gonna go off with the writers yeah he just Um, says farewell mary i leave you in good hands better than we hoped when we hunted the orcs to fit so i guess he's just like mary will die if we bring him with us (laughs) Like, well, not farewell. He hopefully, like, he might not die if he goes with Theoden and everyone else, mm-hmm. but he probably will die if he comes with us and we can't have him f- as extra baggage. Oh, which I should say, Mary says several times he's like, he felt like a forgotten piece of luggage a mm-hmm. lot in this chapter. And I was like, aww. Um, Oh, and at one point, it's when, oh, when Aragorn is talking about, like, this plan and how he's going to leave and he has this sudden change of heart. Um, it's that, this is about Mary. He felt very small and he was puzzled and depressed by all these gloomy words. And I was like, I'm also puzzled and depressed by these gloomy words. <laughs> like you said, though, as the reader, you can connect to them. Uh, I know. So that was my other concern when I saw that we see Theoden and Mary 
go off with the rest of the army and we stay with Legolas, Aragorn, and Gimli, mm-hmm. I was I was relieved to be with them because I think I'd rather follow them than Mary. And I'm sure we'll like hop in on Mary and Theoden and everyone else later. But I was also like, oh, I wonder how this is going to go because this is the first time that we don't. Well, no, I take that back. I lied immediately because um, we do have those moments in two to- the beginning of Two Towers where it's not from the perspective of a hobbit. Remember how at the beginning of the episode I was like, I know what Tolkien's doing here with this narrative format. I see what's happening. And then I was immediately wrong. So. Yeah, you get some new perspective. I don't know that it's ever been in that specific perspective. We can get into it when we get to that piece, though, because I don't know if we've ever seen it from their point of view. It was maybe like two or three chapters and the beginning of Two Towers before they find Mary and Pippin again, because okay. Mary and Pippin get separated because they get taken off by the orcs. So it doesn't happen very often, but it's a couple chapters at the beginning of Two Towers. And then as soon as they meet up again, it's from the perspective of Mary and Pippin again, I think. Right. Yes. Yeah, so they, the army all ride off and Aragorn reveals that he has looked into the Stone of Orthanc. And I was like, I don't remember what that is because it's been such a long time. And it's the Palantir, it's the orb that Saruman threw from his tower. No, it wasn't Saruman, it was Wormtongue. And he threw it from his tower in a fit of like rage and anger. And Pippin looked into it, and that's why Pippin and Gandalf had to run off, because Saruman saw Pippin, and Pippin revealed a couple things. And Aragorn, I was confused because I thought uh, the Palantir was with Gandalf and Pippin, but I guess Aragorn took it. And he looked into it, I guess, as a way to see what Sauron is planning. And what he has Mm -hmm. seen is that it isn't going to be very long until the army has arrived at Minas Tirith. And it says, A grave peril I saw coming unlooked for upon Gondor from the south that will draw off great strength from the defense of Minas Tirith. If it is not countered swiftly, I deem that the city will be lost ere ten days be gone. That's the the reason for why he's like, I have to go do this prophecy fate thing that I'm just now bringing up for the first time about the, that was the other thing. As I was like, how it's weird that like this is the first time this is being mentioned. It's this seer who has this story about how Aragorn is going to or the heir of Isildur is going to come and awaken this army to fight again. And this is when I really had to do some some thinking and I had to like lay it out in my brain as like a timeline and be like, okay, let me see if I get this straight. So this is what I think has happened and is what they are hoping for. So this poem that we are learning of for the first time says, Aragorn must go awaken a dead army that are cursed to fight for him because they didn't fight for Isildur like 3,000 years ago. And so because they did not fight against Sauron and then Isildur cursed them and they, I don't know if they like went into the ground and they just were like skeletons waiting to be reawoken or I don't know what that deal is, but Aragorn has said that he is going to go awaken them so that they can be this power to fight on their side. And I have summed up like a couple like one or two pages of that in a couple sentences because it took me a a while to work all that history out. (laughs) Yeah, it's a little bit hard to work through. And I think some of it too is like knowledge that's in the appendix about the situation because like they just pass through that somehow Aragorn has looked into uh, the Plantier before. Planetier? Palantir. Palantir. Terrible at these pronunciations. (laughs) Um. But, like, I don't remember that ever happening. (sighs) Yeah, he... So that's what... That was the other thing is I was like, is that what he was doing when he decided to go off and brood by himself? Yeah, I. that's what I understand is he... It was either then or maybe when all of the chaos was happening when Pippin had just been, like... When it had been discovered that Pippin had looked into it and Gandalf was like, here, Aragorn, take this. And maybe Aragorn looked into it then. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think it was when he went off and that could explain why when he came back to join the group, why he 
was... That would make more sense. ...beginning his emo phase. Right. And the way that I started thinking about kind of like what is going on and how he did it, I related it to, I don't know if I should say this, I don't think it's still spoilers, but in the movie before Endgame, what was that one called? Infinity War. (laughs) Infinity War. uh, Doctor Strange goes through like all the possible scenarios and there's one scenario, right? Right. I feel like this is where Aragorn is like, I've seen what's going to happen. We only have one option now and it's the worst or at least seems like the worst thing to do yeah it's gonna be the most difficult but this is why yeah and that that's yeah that's like a really good way that's a really good comparison especially for like my simple-minded brain where i'm like what now (laughs) i'm like i was like who's isildur again (laughs) i was like who are these people Yeah, without trying to get into all that history it's like i've looked through and i know the one path now yeah because it's like this magic object that i've now been able to foresee the peril and that I is think, to come. I think it can also explain why Aragorn, he seems really, I don't know if you got this impression, but to me, he seems really crazed in this chapter where he's very like hell bent on like, no, this is, this is what we have to do. And I'm mm-hmm. not stopping until it happens. Whereas everyone else seems like they're being, they're very tired and they're being worn down and it's very scary. But like Aragorn, it seems like he's not even affected almost because he's yeah, so. I, I wrote that down as one of the quotes that I like from this chapter. He says, always my days have seemed to me too short to achieve my desire. And that like wraps up his Ooh, whole mindset yeah. in this chapter. Like the day's not long enough. It's like, like, we gotta go. Yeah, I have to continue. That's, yeah, that's a great, I totally missed that quote. I was too distracted by other things that he does. (laughs) Yeah, there's kind of a lot. Oh my gosh. I will say, that being said, like, this chapter is a really good chapter, too. Like, a lot lot of different things happen that really seem like it's starting to move uh, the like final pieces of the puzzle into place for right. for everything to happen. So they after he's explained what they're going to do, and oh, and by the way, when he mentions the paths of the dead, everyone's like, "That's terrible and awful." I'm not doing that. And Legolas and Gimli are like, that doesn't sound good. We'll go with you because you're our bro now. But like, that's bad. So it has this this area in the land that they are going to has this reputation for everyone saying like, people who go there don't come back. So they're kind of, he feels like they are on a, like a a suicide mission or something to go Mm -hmm. and try and get this done. So on the way there, they stop in Edoras and meet, (gasps) OMG, one of the three female characters. Side note, I should say that there aren't just three female characters. There's technically six. There's Lobelia Sexville Baggins, Goldberry, and I am counting Shelob, the gluttonous evil ancient spider that lives in Mordor. So (laughs) she counts. (laughs) There are six female characters, three of which are like quality. And then there's the Ent Wives that we never see. Um, (laughs) And yeah, so they meet Eowyn, who has been uh, where we last left her like 600 pages ago. No shade, Tolkien. That's just my main issue is that we we meet these female characters and then he's like, Okay, I did a thing. I gave you a female character. Now back to the story. And it's like, I don't know. She calls out a little bit of feminism. Oh, so much. So they meet up with Eowyn, who has been watching Edoras and keeping after things. There's like, once again, picking right back up where they left off with like this weird sexual tension between Aragorn Mm -hmm. and Eowyn, which is very confusing because Tolkien is like also simultaneously in this chapter setting up things with like Aragorn and Arwen. And it just feels like Tolkien has no idea what he's doing in terms of like a romantic subplot. Like not even a subplot. I think he's trying to make it like a, I don't know, like a love triangle, but the girls don't know. So it's really not. I don't even think Aragorn knows. See, that's the thing is I don't think any of them know. But yeah, it says on, this is what I was referring to earlier with that line with Mary. It says, but on Aragorn, most of all, her eyes rested. So that's Eowyn just staring at Aragorn in his emo phase. She asks him what they're doing and where they're going to go. And she says, 
or and she asks to come with them. Right. And this is when I was like, oh snap. This is going to be great. She's going to come with them. It's going to be great because everyone's been talking about like, oh, Eowyn is awesome. She's amazing. She does some really cool stuff. And and I was like, oh, okay. So this is like where it's starting to happen with her character. Uh, And I was like, she's going to come with them. And I wrote down... (laughs) I wrote down, OMG, 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 is Eowyn going to come with them? Please go, please go, please go, OMG, OMG, OMG. She says a lot of stuff that I just want to, like, I almost highlighted every single thing that she says. She says, shall I, and Aragorn's like, for Aragorn's like, you can't come with us. This is very dangerous. And she says, shall I always be left left behind when the writers depart to mind the house while they win renown and find food in beds when they return? And Aragorn still is like, you're doing a great job with what you're doing by staying here. We don't, that's not going unnoticed. And she says, all your words are but to say, you are a woman and your part is in the house. But when the men have died in battle and honor, you have leave to be burned in the house for the men will need it no more. But I am of the house of Errol. I just ruined that great quote by not knowing how to say Errol. Errol. E-O-R-L. But I am of the house of Orl and not a serving woman. I can ride and wield blade and I do not fear either pain or death. And I'm literally just going to keep reading all the amazing, great things she says. A cage to stay. Oh, what do you fear, lady? He asked. A cage, she said, to stay behind bars until use and old age accept them. And all chance of doing great deeds is gone beyond recall or desire. I just love her. She's amazing. And this is when I absolutely was losing my mind with Aragorn. And I was like, shut the fuck up. Stop talking. Aragorn, you shut your mouth. You let her come. And you, you, you shut up now and stop it. (laughs) She's coming with you. I was like, stop it. She's so great. I wrote down uh, most of her quotes too, (gasps) um, just because it's so great. Like this is, all of her words are so beautiful and and it enrages me when yes. you think about it. It's like, Tolkien, you had this in you. Why did yes. you not do this? Why did you not add her into in any female character into this I bigger know. part? To me, it feels like him being him being like, see, I understand what it's like to be a woman. And now <laughs> that I've given you this one page of a woman saying really smart things about feminism, I'm going to go back to the main story with all of the men. It's like, see, yeah. I've given you what you wanted. And it's like, I mean, <laughs> like, not like not really. Like, you you had a really strong start. Yeah, they had us the first half. I'm not going to lie. And you were so close, dude. You were so close. And... <sighs> It enrages me. Like, yeah, it, it, I <laughs> I was like, I can't believe it. Because I thought for sure that that was the other thing. I thought for sure that Aragorn would be like, oh, yeah, please come with us. Obviously, you're a great asset to the team and you're a great fighter and you're very smart and, and strategic. Yeah, that's a great idea. Why don't you come with us? And instead, he's like, your father and brother are not here to give their permission for you to come. Yep. And I'm like, Aragorn, I'm so furious with you right now because I thought you were, I thought you were a bro. I thought you were a good man. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you? And now all I want to do, like, I have never been so enraged by a character's choice to to just be a pole. Yeah, I mean, it. I, I wrote it down like rage. I'm in a rage! This is painful, painful to listen to. Oh, I wrote down in all caps, I might quit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quitting, this is it. I was like, I'm going to have to like quit the podcast now. That's it. I want you to just write 16 chapters <laughs> of what you think would have happened. And then we'll yes, just review that. Exactly. <laughs> There's some vine or something of someone who was making fun of how tragic and sad it is when Sirius dies in Harry Potter and the Word of the Phoenix. Spoiler alert. <laughs> 
if you haven't. <laughs> and it's like him flipping through the pages and then he turns to the page where Sirius is supposed to die and it's like written on a sheet of notebook paper. It's like, and then Sirius came back to life and punched Bellatrix in the face and then Harry and him <laughs> hugged and Harry went to live with him forever and ever. Oh, wait, no, 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 that's not it. It's when Hedwig dies and someone wrote like on a sheet of notebook paper and pasted it over the part where Hedwig gets killed. And it's like, for a moment or two, it appeared that Hedwig was dead. But then she fluttered back to life and Harry saw that it was only a stunning spell. Her cage burst open and she flew off and was free. And that was the last Harry saw of her flying off into freedom. Definitely not dead. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Definitely not dead. That's what I'm yeah, going to do. I'm going to write it all. This in. should be all your bonus content from here on out. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> it's you depicting. Writing the rest traveling. of this book as if Aragorn wasn't a complete, absolute mansplaining <laughs> asshole. And yes. uh, an Eowyn came with them. So as I yes. was like turning the page, so they go to rest after their meal. And uh, I was like, oh, okay, maybe the next day he'll change his mind. He does not. And not without her trying because she pleads her case. She, she follows yeah, after she literally, and pleads her case. Then she fell on her knees saying, I beg thee. He says, nay, la- I hate this. Ah! <laughs> he kisses her hand and is like, mm-hmm. nay, lady. Kisses her hand. I would have punched him in the face. I would have been like, I think the f*** not, you trick bitch. <laughs> And so they they write off. Yeah, so backing up, yeah, when she, like, asks them again. Basically, he's like, you have been asked to stay here. I can't in good faith take you away from your duty here. Mm-hmm. Which, to give Aragorn a slut, like, the slightest morsel of benefit of the doubt. I understand that, of being like... The king, the literal king, gave you this position to stay here. And I think that's what is the best thing to do. I don't have the authority to say, yeah, sure, you can abandon your position here and come with us. Right. I understand that. However, the way he phrases it, he says, for that I could not grant without leave of the king and of your brother. It's the fact that he's like, of your brother. And I'm like, she don't need no man. She an independent woman. I'm an independent woman. The shoes on my feet, I bought them. He's like, I need a man's permission before I can allow such a thing. Yeah. And let's just point out, they're returning in the morning. Like the following morning, her dad and brother are to return yeah and aragorn is so bad i think so yeah um because she's like they will not return until tomorrow yeah they'll return tomorrow it's like uh it's one day aragorn and that's also i think that also just shows like how crazed and obsessed aragorn he couldn't wait a day to have this huge asset on his team and i think which is why i was so shocked when aragorn was like no you can't come is because i think had he not like looked in the palantir and had he not had this like transformation and stuff i think he would have said yes i think he would have been like yeah come but so much has changed and his mind is only on this one thing of we have to go and like bring this army to life i don't know how that's going to work <laughs> but like i guess so so they leave eowyn alone so she can Start dismantling the patriarchy. I will dismantle this oppressive establishment board by board. By herself. She got this. <laughs> that's what that's what my version of this is going to be about, is it's going to be from the perspective of Eowyn, and it's going to be about her dismantling the patriarchal bullshire of Middle-earth. So I'm here for it. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> okay. And you're probably going to notice that, like, I can feel it in my in my bones that, like, I'm just very angry now. And I feel like a lot of my rage is just, is just going to come through for the rest of this episode. So I apologize for that. But I'm also not sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Because I've been told that women apologize too much. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not supposed to say I'm sorry. You're supposed to thank them for whatever it is. Thank but you. Not, I'm sorry I'm late. Thank you for waiting. Yeah. Um, I'm not sorry. I'm angry. Thank you for listening to my rage. Yes. <laughs> okay. They start going down this path, the paths of the dead. And apparently 
how Brad is still there. I forgot he was with them. I thought it was just like Legolas, Gimli, and Aragorn. And this happens a couple more times where it mentions like Ella Dan and Ella here, who are, um, by the way, the twin sons of Elrond, who also joined Mm -hmm. them. And I was like, wait, y'all are, who are you? Wait a minute. Who are you? (laughs) I was like, I forgot you were there. Sorry. Yeah, I don't think I remembered that the twins were with him still. Yeah, they were like in the middle of this like dark area, this dark cave. And then it's like an Elodin said. And I was like, who? You're like, what? (laughs) I do love, though, that this um, a lot of this is in Gimli's point of view. Yes. So Love. Gimli is a dwarf, and we know that dwarves are used to like the caves of Moria and the mi- like mm-hmm. the mines of Moria, very dark situations and places. Like Gim when everyone back in fellowship, when everyone was like, Oh no, we have to go in Moria, Gimli's like, All right, we gotta go in Moria. He is even yeah. <laughs> Yes! Pump's fist. Um, He was stoked. (laughs) He is the opposite of stoked here. And he mentions like several times throughout this how nervous and afraid he is. And it's Mm -hmm. very odd that a dwarf should feel this way, even though they're like seemingly like on paper, a similar situation to Moria. Um, So that just is a testament to how awful this place is. Yeah, like, if he's scared of this with the particular set of standards, we should be scared as the reader. And and mm-hmm. I think that's why they put us in his point of view. There. Yeah, it's like, I think so, too. He's the most familiar with the situation and the people, and he's uneasy. Yeah, because if it had been, like, from the perspective of Aragorn, it would have been, like, and it was, like, walking through a field in the middle of a starry night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see the road ahead. Yeah. Everything is great. Everything's... I'm where I want to be. This is great. Oh, also, side note, you know, we're almost 800 pages into this very epic journey and book, and yet Tolkien still finds the time to make sure that we know the names of all of their horses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, like, makes sure to name all of the horses. Anyway, so they start going into this, I guess, like, cave or, or tunnel area, and it says that once a blindness came upon him, even upon Gimli, Gloin's son, who had walked unafraid in many deep places of the world. This place is real creepy. Uh, there seemed an endless whisper of voices all about him, a murmur of words in no tongue that he had ever heard before. So it's like Moria and Mordor combined, I guess. Right. Of like, just feeling like not a great place to be right now. And they very casually come across like a bunch of dead, like a bunch of skeletons. And Aragorn's like, ah, he was trying to get out, it seems. All right, let's keep moving. Because they find, it says, uh, Aragorn, at one point they stop and Aragorn kneels down and it says, the bones of a mighty man. And he had, he was still in the position that he was in when he died. He, uh, he was like clawing at a door trying to get out. His finger bones yep. were still clawing at the cracks. A notched, and I'm going to have to sneeze. <coughs> Bless you. One more. <coughs> Great. I hate pollen. His finger bones were still clawing at the cracks. A notched and broken sword lay by him as if he had hewn at the rock in his last despair. And Aragorn's like, what uh he's he's talking about the door whither does it lead why would he pass none shall ever know all right moving on well let's move on (laughs) for that is not my errand he says let us pass and then come um because they have to go to the stone of it's spelled e-r-e-c-h but in my Mm -hmm. mind i'm pronouncing it eric like the name of like (laughs) eric like the the, like from that 70s show the stone of (laughs) eric <laughs> and it's just funny because it makes it sound just so not fantasy Lord Lord of the Rings epic. Yeah. <laughs> the Stone of Eric. So at last they come out. Uh so they come out and it was just only it was only sunset from mm-hmm. the day that they it was still the same day and the sun was setting from the day that they had entered this place. Though for all that he could then tell, it might have been twilight in some later year or some other world. And that's what I imagine we're all going to feel like when we finally leave our houses at at the end of all this. It's like, what do you mean it's only been, you know, three months later? Yeah, what? 
They all get back on their horses and start moving forward. And Legolas turns back. I hate it. (laughs) Says, so casually. The dead are following. I see shapes of men and of horses and pale banners like shreds of clouds and spears like winter thickets on a misty night. The dead are following. Yes, the dead ride behind. They have been summoned, said Elodin. I see dead people. And they just say that so nonchalant, like way too nonchalantly. They've been summoned, man. What you worried about? (laughs) They're like, yeah, there's all these zombies or dead people. I don't know. That's what I'm wondering if, like, maybe it'll be clarified in future chapters, hopefully, of, like, what exactly is this army? Like, are they, are they, like, skeletons? Are they, like, zombies? Are they, like, ghosts? I don't, you know. You'll learn more just next chapter. Woo! All right. What's the next chapter? Um, So you'll learn a little bit about that and a little bit about some of the stuff in the caves. Okay. Cool. Yeah, because right now it's just all, they haven't even, they haven't like described anything yet. They just right. say like, ah, oh, yes, the dead are coming. And it's like, uh, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, so then they arrive at the Stone of Eric. <laughs> and it's time for Aragorn to do this summoning. And it seemed to those, that, so he, oh, so he blows in this horn. Because that's what this poem that this seer recited however many years ago. I don't know. That's what this poem says that the heir of Isildur will come and blow a horn and will reawaken this army. It seemed to those that stood near that they had heard a sound of answering horns as if it was an echo in deep caves far away. Uh, Oathbreakers, why have ye come? And a voice was heard out of the night that answered him, as if from far away, to fulfill our oath and have peace. They try to go to bed. Not a lot of them can sleep, but Aragorn doesn't see, seem too, confu- too uh, concerned about, about sleep or rest or anything. No, he's still crazed. Yeah, and, and it's also like... I imagine Gimli and Legolas and everyone being like, this is the worst possible place to be sleeping right now. And Aragorn's like, what are you talking about? This is fine. It's a great camping spot. I don't know what you mean. (laughs) This is a great couple line. This is a great line to end the chapter on. It's so cool. But the next day there came no dawn and the gray company passed on into the darkness of the storm of Mordor and were lost to mortal sight. But the dead followed them. Ooh. So good. <laughs> so good. That's what I said. They'll, they'll continue. Like, the, the piece about the dead following doesn't yeah. just, like, go away. Good. So you'll get more of it next, next uh, chapter. Yep. <clears throat> so, um, I wrote, alrighty then. And then in all caps, Alrighty then. Aragorn, your plan sucks because I was just <laughs> furious with him. I was like, how dare you speak to this woman that we have, we only have, I think maybe a total of five pages worth of AON content because she showed when the chapter in which she's introduced, it's like. And a woman stood there next to Theoden. And then a couple pages later, it's like, this is my niece Theoden. I mean, this is my niece Eowyn. She will will stay here and watch over the town. And then they have like a feast. And then they all leave again. And then we get like, like maybe two pages in this chapter. So, so we have like Eowyn content for five pages worth. I don't know. Regardless, I will defend her to the ends of the earth. I'd love her. And... Yeah, and this is the start of uh, my novel that is going to be <laughs> all just, it's just to spite. Titled Tolkien. Eowyn. Yeah, Eowyn. I'm going to, no, Eowyn, Eowyn dismantling the paint. A Tale of Spite is what I'm going to call it. <laughs> tale of Spite. Yeah. Because that's what this is all about. Okay. Woo! I feel like I rushed through that because I was like on an adrenaline rush of... <laughs> I don't know. We still recorded for like over 50 minutes. I know. Oh my God. Okay. Do you have any uh, like thoughts or anything that we didn't get to touch on for the chapter? I don't think so. I mean, I think this is a really good chapter. It's long, but it's really good and it's setting up a lot. 
um, that's going to end up being important and, like, useful over the next couple of chapters. I feel like that's very standard for Tolkien for the first couple of chapters of the book to really just be setting the scene. Yes. Getting a feel for, for what's going on. I always love anything that happens to Merry and Pippin. I love being a part of that. Um, so very, very much love the beginning of the episode where Mary finds someone who's kind to him and he's able to somehow mirror what Pippin is doing without even being with them. They're great. It's so sweet. It'll be great when they're reunited. Yes. Hopefully. Yeah. I'm excited about all that. So where can people find you on the internet? And also you have a new fun, exciting thing to tell people about. Um, I do. So you can find me on Instagram at Sunny Pixels. I just started a project. Um, it is a new podcast. I am with my brother and it's just all about being siblings and we kind of talk about past experiences and find out how the other one actually kind of felt about the situation and, and <laughs> their point of view. We have found already that there are especially high school. We did an episode about high school. It's our most recent one. And it was very different than what I thought it was like for him. So it's been really fun. Um, it's called I'm Telling Dad, a podcast about being siblings. So you can find it wherever you get your podcasts. That's so fun. I wish I wish one of my siblings would do a podcast with me, but I don't think they would ever do that. He's a big podcaster. He's He has two other podcasts with friends. So um, I... I wanted to do a true crime podcast. I've been wanting to do a podcast for a while. And it's like, it's it's so oversaturated. And I don't think I can just do it by myself. So when I was telling him, he was like, I have this idea. We're the only siblings. So it's just he and I. So he's like, let's do this. That's and, awesome. And, uh, yeah, we just recorded our third episode. So that's amazing. Very exciting. That's what I'm talking about as a proud member of WBNE. You can learn more about that by going to WBNE.org. And this week, you should listen to bagels, especially if you're hungry and want a bagel like I do right now because it's dinner time and I'm hungry. Go listen to Bagels. It's by Tyler and Emily, who are wonderful. And then also sometimes there are not Tyler and Emily on for special, fun, um, like, guest episodes. So go listen to that. Hello, I'm Tyler Carlin, and I love you. And I'm Emily Carlin, and I love you too. And if you love someone or you love love, you should listen to our new podcast, Bagels. We're not experts, but we sure would like to be. And we believe the best way to get better at something is to practice. So listen to our story as it unfolds as young parents. As best friends. As husband and wife. As we explore what relationships mean to us and to those around us. Bagels. Available now at WBNE.org or wherever you get your podcasts. The cover is by Graphite, a.k.a. Vaishan Brandon. You can support him on Instagram at graphite.vmb. You can find the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Tolkien About Pod. And you can also join the Facebook group, which you should do immediately. You can find me on Twitter at MC WhatsApp and Instagram at MC Turn Down for Watt. You can support the podcast on Patreon at patreon.com slash Tolkien About Pod. And I need to pull up a sponsor of the week who is Danny. No, wait. Did, no, jo no. Mots. There we go. <laughs> I haven't updated my spreadsheet in a bit. Okay, so I had to find it. Thank you, Matt, so much for your continued support of the podcast. I appreciate it very much. And you are a wonderful human being, and you're amazing. Okay, bye. <laughs> Matt actually is just a perfect human. I know. He's so nice, and he has, like, a positivity thread going on Twitter that you should go check out. I don't know what his Twitter handle is, but everyone should go follow him on Twitter right now. It's just, it's just like a nice little ray of sunshine to have in your Twitter feed. Kind of related to Patreon, I don't know. Maybe you guys can tell me if this is something you would be interested in. But I'm thinking about adding as a perk access to a private TikTok account that would just be Lord of the Rings related TikToks. Because unfortunately, my brain keeps coming up with Lord of the Rings related TikToks. And I don't think a lot of people will find them funny except for this like very niche audience. <laughs> so I think that would be amazing. So tell me if that's something that you would be interested in. If it is, uh, I might look into into doing that. I don't know. We will see. Oh my God. So a couple weeks ago, the discussion question was, 
tell me about a character that uh, a character that is widely popular, well liked that you do not like. I think there's no secret who it is for me. It's Sam. <laughs> And I shouldn't have asked this question because it just made me angry with so many responses that people were giving. From the Facebook group, there was like a lot of comments on the Facebook group one. Um, Nathaniel has to leave immediately because he said he does not like Leslie. Nope. The only thing I will be waving is your decapitated head on a stick in front of your weeping mother. And I... You're banned, Nathaniel, banned. (laughs) He's. No, I love you. Don't. You're not actually banned. <laughs> He's out of here. <laughs> um. Who else? Jason says he doesn't. He didn't like the Andrew Garfield Spider Man, which I can understand. However, this is the one that got me. He does not like the Bard from The Witcher, and I was like, how can you not like Yaskier? Amy Coyle said Sherlock from BBC Sherlock. I can understand that. Um, maybe not liking him. I just think he's a a great character. And then one that I don't know a lot of, oh, and a lot of people said like, said Katniss. Um, but a very common answer was like, does Snape count? And I was like, I don't think he counts as being a quote unquote, well-liked character, because I think there's like too much controversy around him for it to be like a universally liked character. Yeah, I think he's definitely like a split, Mm -hmm. you know, people either love him or hate him. I don't, I don't think he was redeemed. Um, But a lot of people do. Yeah, I think, I think it's a matter of like, a lot of people really like his character, like, like mm-hmm. his story and his character arc and everything, I wouldn't necessarily say that people are like, yeah, Snape is like my, he's the best. I want to go get a butter beer with him, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. Anyway, so thank you all for sharing those answers. This week's discussion question is, tell me about a time where a character that you trusted and was otherwise a good character and a nice character that you believed in and had faith in did something that absolutely enraged you and you disagreed with completely. Hmm. I wonder who I'm referring to right now. Aragorn. I wonder where you came up with that question. I know, right? So Weird. Interesting. Yeah, I know. Huh? Um, so tell me that on one of the social medias or in our Discord channel. That is it. Oh, wait. Side note. If you want to rate and review, that would be great. You don't even have to review. Please rate. At this point, I have more one-star reviews than I do four-star reviews. So I'm not saying to go give me four-star reviews so that that will even out. Definitely give me those five star reviews. That would be amazing. <laughs> but I was looking at it the other day. I was like, huh, there's a lot of like angry Tolkien fanboys, I bet, who came across this podcast and this is not what they were expecting. So uh, it's not what they wanted to hear. Uh, yeah. Um. Anyway, yeah. So if you want to make me happy, rate and review. Woo. All that being said, Pix, do you have any parting words for the audience? Nope, I can't wait to hear what you go through next chapter. I can't either. It's going to be exciting. And that's what I'm talking about. <laughs>